Hello everyone, we are back with uh, yet another episode on this Tamil Radiothon that we are doing and it will be live broadcasted on CMR from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Saturday, June 11th. Just mark those dates. Very good day because it's a day where, you know, you can feel how many kind people are around and uh, so many doctors and people in healthcare are working for all of us, especially for the Scarborough community. And when we talk about Scarborough community, Love Scarborough is the campaign as well, which is a part of it. And who better to talk about uh, Love Scarborough than the person, the guest I have today. Um, her name is Dr. Sh Nisha Ravichandran. Dr. Nisha Ravichandran. And um, welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you so much. <laughs> I can see a very young doctor here. and feel so <laughs> Well, and beautiful as well, beautiful soul as well, because, you know, um, when you work in healthcare and uh, you put a lot of efforts with heart, I can see the souls uh, that are involved in this healthcare are really nice ones. Thank you. I would like to introduce uh, my viewers here and listeners about you a bit. So, Dr. Nisha Ravichandran uh, was born in Sri Lanka and she came to Canada when she was just five years old. And why I said that she's the best person to talk about Love Scarborough campaign because she grew up in Scarborough itself and uh, she completed her um, uh, medicine uh, degree from Western University and then family medicine residency at McMaster University. And then she started to practice in 2016 while doing part-time masters of clinical sciences in family medicine at Western University, wow. And uh, her research inter uh, interests are immigrants' health and their access to health care. We are going to talk about it, but yeah, that's why I say that when we are talking to Tamil community here on radio and to all those uh, people who are immigrants and they are uh, seeing this video, it's very important, uh, you know, to know how you can help and how you view this system here. Um, but before we go ahead, welcome again. And tell me your role about as a family physician first. So as a family physician, I think um, family physicians are a really important part of the healthcare system in Canada. Um, mm -hmm. We are involved in preventing disease and also in treating disease. And I, I feel very fortunate to be involved in my patients' lives from you know pregnancy to newborn care to children, teenagers and adults and then elderly adults. Um, so we see the whole spectrum. Uh, we're involved in managing mental health concerns, um, complex issues, as well as preventative cancer screening and to basically try to make sure that people stay healthy and if they develop any diseases or illnesses that we're treating often multiple illnesses and um, keeping people as um, healthy as possible. Um, mm. So I feel very privileged uh, to be in that role and uh, to be providing that kind of comprehensive care for my patients. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I was seeing here that, you know, you have a research interest where uh, you focus, you have focused on immigrant immigrants health and their access to health care. And there is a paper mentioned BMC Primary Care General. Can you tell us more about that? What uh, what was that paper about? So this paper was just published in April 2022 in the BMC Primary Care Journal. Mm -hmm. um, one of my main interests uh, in research is looking at Im immigrant health and access to health care. Um, and I think this started with my own experiences coming to Canada with my family when I was five um, and seeing my uh, parents and as well as other community members struggling to navigate the health care system. Um, and then when I entered practice and started seeing patients myself, I saw a lot of my patients struggling with many of the same barriers. Um, and there's been lots of research about access to health care uh, for immigrants. And we know that uh, especially immigrants face a number of barriers of, to accessing health care. So even though we live in a country uh, where we're fortunate to have publicly funded health care, there's still lots of barriers related to financial barriers, language barriers, uh, cultural barriers, um, transportation related barriers, and even just lack of knowledge of the health care system. So when I saw this in practice with my patients, I, I wanted to learn more about it. So I um, started the study uh, with the support of Dr. Bridget Ryan and Dr. Maria Matthews at Western University, um, who were amazing supports throughout this whole uh, research experience. And what we were looking at specifically is um, the experience of uh, recent immigrants compared to established immigrants. And what we found that recent immigrants face even more barriers than established immigrants. And 
and these barriers um, are a number of different types of barriers related to just lack of knowledge of the healthcare system, mm -hmm. lack of social supports, and um, often financial barriers as mm -hmm. new immigrants kind of set down their roots and uh, become more economically stable, they often face many barriers. And the other thing that we found is that new immigrants often don't have a family doctor they're about half as likely to have a family doctor compared to mm. established immigrants. Mm. And they often are accessing health care through more episodic care, which is what we call things like walk-in clinics or urgent mm. cares, as opposed to having a, a continuity of care through a family physician. So the purpose of this research really is to try to improve access, because only if we have the information and we have the research, we can try to improve policy making and improve access for new immigrants. Perfect. Okay, so I'm sure many people can relate to what you just, uh, you know, told that there is a problem when it comes to recent immigrants, all the more in Canada to access healthcare. And her paper is about that. So it's a work towards a direction to make it better. And now can you please uh, describe like how you decided to support SHN? What was the drive there besides all this? So I have been involved uh, through SHN in terms of research and education, um, as well as through my clinical practice. Uh, but at the beginning of 2022, I was kind of struck by just the feeling of burnout and the struggles that a lot of my patients, um, my friends, my colleagues have been facing through the pandemic. And at the same time, um, at the beginning of 2022, I had just submitted my paper looking at um, the barriers to access for immigrants. And and we know Scarborough is really a, a place of immigrants. And um, I, I wanted to do something to make a difference, uh, to create a positive change in the community where I grew up and the community where I practice. Um, so that's why I started this uh, campaign. Um, one of my kind of pastimes besides medicine is uh, painting. So mm -hmm. I reached out to the Scarborough Health Network Foundation and I've been selling my paintings um, on behalf and uh, with 100% of the proceeds going to the Scarborough Health Network Foundation. And for me, it really is just a privilege to uh, be, you know, uh, giving back to this community and just trying to create at least a small uh, difference to kind of decrease those barriers that we have to accessing healthcare in our community. Wow. So I'm talking to a painter and artist as well, besides the doctor. Wow. Okay. I know that you love Scarborough because you have grown up, been grown up there, but. Um, what in other sense do you think Scarborough is so special? I know every community is special, but what makes Scarborough a little, more, a little bit more special for you? So, yeah, it, it's true. Every community is special. And through my medical training, I worked in so many different communities and uh, all of them had something really special about them. But when I came back to Scarborough uh, to practice, I really felt like I was coming back home. Um, it really, I think, Scarborough has a lot of things that set it apart. I think obviously the diversity um, is, is a huge part of it, but also just I think there's a culture in Scarborough of humility, of gratitude, and of work ethic because I think almost everybody uh, who lives in Scarborough came to Canada or came to Scarborough looking for a better life for themselves and for their families. And I think that's really reflected in the patients that I see and just in our community. And that's why I think it's so important to support that community. Um, we know that there's a need in terms of funding for our local hospitals. And I think it's so important to support that community by giving back when we can. Well, you mentioned about ethics and that is reflected in the patients as well. I can see that's reflected in the doctors as well there. <laughs> and why do you think the listeners today and the viewers today might be considering making a gift, uh, you know, through this uh, Radiothon? So I think we have a really unique opportunity and I think a special opportunity right now to be a part of the solution um, to help future generations, to help our children and to help mm -hmm. newcomers who are arriving uh, to Canada or arriving to Scarborough and need health care. Um, I think one of, for the Tamil community in particular, I, I know that one of our most important values is to give a better life for our children than the life that we had for ourselves. And that's why so many of us, our parents and our families and ourselves, uprooted our lives in Sri Lanka to leave a country that was at war uh, to come to Canada. Um, I know for myself, my parents made so many sacrifices, and that's the reason 
why I'm here today. And I think all of us can say that about, uh, you know, the sacrifices that we've made or that our families and parents have made to come here and to have this life that we have right now. Um, and uh, we can also thank Scarborough, a lot of us, um, because I think a lot of us put down our roots in Scarborough or in communities near Scarborough. And we know that the Scarborough Health Network right now really needs funding. And we have an opportunity right now um, to contribute, to make um, our lives better, to get better access to healthcare for ourselves, but I think more importantly for our children, um, for future generations and for new immigrants who are continuing to arrive to, to Scarborough. Okay, so any last notes for them? Um, so yeah, I, I hope that people will really consider to contribute to the Scarborough Health Network by donating directly. Um, if you're interested in my art, again, with 100% of the proceeds going to the Scarborough Health Network, my website is nisharaviart.com and my Instagram is at nisharaviart. So I would love for people to take a look, but really the important thing is that the funding gets to the Scarborough Health Network Foundation. So um, please do consider just making a donation directly to the Scarborough Health Network Foundation. Great. I'm going to visit to the Instagram and the website today. For sure, you guys do as well. Um, the uh, All the proceeds, as you know, from the donations will be going uh, to SHN to purchase urgently needed medical equipments and, you know, highest priority treatments. So it is for everyone's welfare, especially for the Scarborough community there who are living around. And donations can be made in three ways, just to remind my viewers here. Online at shnfoundation.ca slash Tamil or in person, there are drop-off centers, RBC Branch, Kingston and McCowan, Canadian Tamils Chamber of Commerce, and Nava Wilson LLP. And you can even call into it. That's 416-431-8152. All these details are in the video below as well. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much and good luck. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. All right, she was uh, Dr. Nisha Ravichandran with us talking about SHN Radiothon.